Today we're once again back in Bamboo Studio and if you haven't already seen my top 10 Bamboo Studio for beginners then please watch that video first since today we're going to talk about the little bit more secret functions or at least the not so obvious functions and things that I think that you definitely should know about Bamboo Studio and if you're a little bit more advanced and want to skip ahead feel free to use all the chapters down below as well but before you do so please do watch this first tip to the end since it will be packed with features that I I'm pretty sure you don't already know. I still call it the secret menu since it took me way too long time to actually find this menu myself. All you have to do is just right click and then you can go in here to add a primitive. Basically it's just a super super simple shape. In this case it's a cube and we can also include for example a cone. But something else that you might have already seen that I completely missed the first uh, five times I went into this secret menu is that not only do we have primitives such as cubes, cylinders, cones, discs, torus, whatever a torus is, you also have something down here that says bamboo cube, bamboo cube v2, 3d benchy and fdm test. So if you do click here on the benchy, you get a benchy just like a super amazing shortcut. But that made me thinking this benchy file needs to be stored somewhere and if that benchy file is stored somewhere that benchy file can be replaced, right? You start to see where I'm getting at here. So I decided to jump deep into my folders here on my Mac where I can actually find the Bamboo Studio app. Uh, and if I right click I can also show package contents and then heading into contents, resources and models we do have a list of everything that shows up in this menu, but unfortunately it's not as easy as just taking a random STL file and throw it in there because for some reason it just will not show up. So as an example, as some of you might already know, I am located in Taiwan. I know it doesn't look like that, but that is the case. So I wanted to actually save one of these Taiwan keychains that I have and then just drag it into this folder. But for some reason it doesn't work. But since I don't know better and I just never give up, I realized that if you just change the name of any STL to one of those that are already exists in this uh, secret menu, it works. Uh, so it just needs to have an exact same name as these uh, presets or, or these uh, STLs. So for example, we take this bamboo cube, we can just rename this actually, we don't have to remove it. So we take original, uh, just to have it still in the same folder if we ever want to print it in the future. And then we take the Taiwan keychain STL that I just added myself and we rename that bamboo underscore cube. And then we remove this, we right click, add the primitive, bamboo cube, and there we have a Taiwan keychain, just like that. And if you want to take this one step further, uh, I do have one STL which is actually a whole plate filled with 27 keychains in this case. We do the same here with the, the V2s and then we save that here. We remove that STL, we right click, add primitive, bamboo cube, bamboo cube V2 and we have 27 Taiwanese keychains. Isn't that amazing? Uh, I, I, I don't know how this can be a function and a feature in Bamboo Studio without actually being like an official function. I would love for this to be customized and I would love to be able to add as many as I can. One thing to, to note though, at, since these are STL files, any coloring you are doing in Bamboo Studio uh, will not be saved. Next secret function in Bamboo Studio is so secret so it doesn't even actually exist in Bamboo Studio. Or if it does, I have at least not been able to find it. But that does not mean that we cannot access it in some other ways. But in order to show you how this works, I just need to start a print with a few of these Taiwan keychains just so I can actually show you how to not stop this print. So what do I mean by not stopping the print? Now it is very rare that I do have any issues at all with my Bamboo Lab A1, but sometimes it could be if, for example, I'm filling the entire bed with multiple small objects and there's like one adhesive issue because I've accidentally touched the plate with my fingers, for example, you, you all know the drill. If one tiny object is not actually sticking to the plate, then that object will be pushed out of the way and then the printer will continue printing in the air that might end up putting filaments 
on the other prints or just causing all different kinds of issues. And I didn't have a good way of, of dealing with this other than just hoping for the best or stopping the entire print. And this is the secret function that I don't think exists in Bamboo Studio. Uh, that is that if you are using the Bamboo Lab Handy app, you can actually just click on skip and then you have this screen with the entire uh, bed plate. And then all we have to do is to just uh, click on the ones that we do want to skip. So now for the remaining uh, 36 layers of this print, uh, number one and three in this case uh, will not be printed and they will be skipped every single layer. So in the end, you will hopefully still end up with three perfect Taiwanese keychains and not having to waste any filament uh, if for some reason two of these objects would not have been perfectly uh, adhered to the first layer or any other issues happening during the duration of this print. You don't have to just sit there as the filament just gets wasted layer by layer, uh, which is an absolutely amazing function that I wish that I would have known a lot sooner. And speaking of which, let's head back in to Bamboo Studio and continue with the rest of this video. Next up is maybe not so secret way of how to manipulate and how to cut or merge different items within Bamboo Studio, but it's something that I see a lot of people online asking about how to just make some very, very simple uh, adjustments or changes to one STL file or 3MF file that seems to be one fixed object already. And if you're already subscribing to this channel and click that notification bell, hopefully you already see this video before Father's Day on Sunday. So if you do need some last minute uh, gift recommendations or gift ideas please go and check out my previous video with my top recommendations for this year's father's day but if you do want to customize this even further we do have a very nice tool up here called cut tool or c on the keyboard that shows where you can actually cut this model so if we do drag it down here and then we click on perform cut and then we can see we actually have split it up in two different objects. So now as far as uh, Bamboo Studio is concerned, although this is uh, from one imported STL file, uh, these are actually two separate objects on this plate. And if you were not already aware, if you are using multiple objects on the same plate, Bamboo Studio actually has an object menu and you can then click on these different objects to see exactly which one is highlighted. But what you may not know is that if you click on this little icon up here, you see everything in a different view and as you are clicking on these informations you can actually choose and change the layer height for example the wall loops and the infill density per object and you have all the the different menus and all the different selections here on the right in the original object fields you can still actually see everything down here and this is again based on the object that you have selected but I personally like to have this menu up here so it's very easy to see everything side by side and it's also a great way if you want to do some testings yourself where you can just have all these different objects selected uh, and then you can for example adjust like one wall loop two wall loops so I highly recommend this uh, secret object menu you can of course uh, rename these as well so we have a uh, little bit easier names here uh, so for the base let's say we go in here and we want the the base to have fuzzy skin for example so we go in here uh, the trophy nothing we slice the plate and then we see that the base has fuzzy skin whereas the trophy does not we do want to actually uh, put these together as well and if we do this you can see that since these are not two different objects even if we go into the trophy and we go in here on the move and we use the z axis as we say in the uk <coughs> proper english we lift it up here to probably there and we let it go then it will automatically go down to the base plate because bamboo studio thinks of these as two different objects and you cannot just start printing one object in the middle of the air. So this one will default back to the base plate. And that is because these are two different objects. So how do we do that? In this case, it can maybe be a bad example because it comes together as one STL file, but just follow along for the sake of, of this example. We highlight both of these and then we just right click and we merge these two objects. So now this is now an assembly in this object menu. Previously, it was two separate objects, the trophy and the base. And now we're gonna right click and we're gonna merge these. And there are now one assembly and it's still the trophy and it's still the base, 
but you can also highlight the total assembly and move these together. Not only can you move these together, you can also now move these objects in relationship to each other. For example, we go in here, we take the trophy, and then now we move and we do their X axis and we now use this Z axis and then we leave that right there. And now it stays. And this is because it is now part of an assembly together with this base. And speaking about having a lot of different objects within the same print, uh, just one other thing that could be very helpful as well. This is the, the wallet example, the wallet print, which uh, it, it still works, it still holds up very well, which is also one of my recommended Father's Day prints. For example, this one, the actual file is called version two original three, four, five cards. In this case, the designer did a pretty good job actually putting them in the order of three, four and five cards, but if you just right click, you can also click on show labels and then you can right away see the name of the actual STL files of each object that makes up these specific prints. This is all up to the designer. So in this case, version two, original three cards, four cards, five cards makes it super easy. Uh, and here we have the coin tray for wallet USD. And here we have the coin tray for wallet euro. Amazing uh, bonus points for the designer here. Uh, this is how it should be. Not everyone is like this. So if, for example, we jump back into the ultimate filament spool enclosure, uh, I cannot say that the labeling management is uh, so ultimate, to be honest, because here we have super duper three STL four. And here we have super duper three STL 22 STL four. STL 22, STL 17 could be useful sometimes, I guess, if you have a lot of information and you do want to see uh, if something is the exact same file or not. So for example, here we have two number fours, we have two STL underscore sevens, means that these two are the identical STL files. Uh, whereas on this plate, we do have two separate STL files. So one is bracket one and one is bracket two, which means that they should at least not be exactly the same. So even if uh, there has been a maybe lazy job of naming these labels, uh, they could still be useful if you just know how to use them. But the actual reason for why I am using this print as an example, when I printed this out for my ultimate uh, fill uh, spool enclosure for AMS Lite, I did run into some issues with my first batch. Basically, there are some small markings here where the black filament has been uh, covering the, the white or it, for some reason, I guess, accidentally landed on the plate and then the white was printing on top of the black one. So it left some uh, not so perfect marks on this. But after a very quick search online, I came across another YouTuber who had the exact same issue who told me about this super amazing little trick. And that is that if you click here on the plate menu, which also took me like a week to figure out that these were actually buttons that you can like press and not just like some a decoration or, or symbol for some reason. Uh, you can actually change the layer filament sequence for both the first layer and all the other layers. And this means that you can actually customize the order of the color it will be printed in. And as a rule of thumb, you always want to have the lighter colors as early as possible. Plus, technically, I guess you will also save some filament since it would actually use less filament going from white to black than from black to white when it does the, the color flushing with your AMS. So uh, only benefits to just spend a few seconds going in here and changing the layer filament sequence, uh, especially if you are going from white to black. And for the last tip, let's use this trophy as well as our little sandbox playground. One quick thing to add as well, if you want to turn on or off these labels, you have to right click outside of the plate and you have the show label menu right there. If you right click on the actual uh, print or if you right click on the plate, uh, you will not have that label menu for some reason. Uh, so you do have to right click outside in this little gray area here. And then you can right away decide if you want to show the labels or not. Last thing that I wanted to talk about is painting support, which I found to be very useful in some cases, especially if you have support that will be in some unfortunate places and will kind of screw up the print more than needed. I will do a dedicated video about supports in general. So if that is something that you want to see, please remember to subscribe. But I do think that the main 
function that you should know. In this case, maybe a bad example, because if you do slice this, it does not require any support at all. But that does not mean that we cannot add it ourselves later if, for example, we have printed it once and realized that, well, because of our circumstances, uh, we do need to add a little bit of support. So all we have to do is to go in here in Bamboo Studio and then go under the support menu and just click on enable support. And in the support settings, we can choose between tree or normal support and also manual and auto. So just as an example, we're going to take the tree auto support, which, which I think works 99% of the time. So although technically Bamboo Studio will not give us any error message if we don't have a support. Uh, if we do click on enable support, it will automatically create the support for us. But let's just say there that it just happened to be one place right here when we have our a logo or we have main issue for me actually is for example if i would have different colors then for some reason then it's very hard to get it perfectly clean uh, because there will be some like color spillage from the support and into the actual prints so in order for us to paint our own supports we have to click up here on the supports painting tool or l so for this purpose we're going to use the sphere or the 3d circle we can increase the, the pen size a little bit and if we look underneath here this is really we see that Bamboo Studio uh, recommends that we put support. And if we do let Bamboo Studio do this automatically, this is where Bamboo Studio would put support. But let's just say that, for example, we don't want that for, for different color issues or something like this. Uh, instead, we just want support around this little uh, neck here. Is that what you call this area of a trophy? And then now we just have to go to return and we have to slice the plate again and we see that now bamboo studio has given us support right where we painted it uh, but we still have support here and that is because we still have the tree auto function on so we have to go in here and we have to change this to tree manual uh, if we do want tree support which is the one that I recommend. And here we see that we do have all the support that is on this is now on that specific area only. But one thing that you might see here as well is that some supports go down to the plate, whereas some supports start here on the base to go into that area because we have only selected the area where the support will end and not where the support will begin, if that makes sense. Thankfully, that is also super, super easy to fix uh, under the support here. We do have on build plate only. We just click there. And uh, again, uh, if you do know any kind of menu or any changes you want to make here, uh, you have a search function here as well. So for example, I know that it includes something with plate. Then we have it here, support on build plate only. And then we will be shown exactly where that is in the menu. Then we have to slice the plate again. And now we see that it has painted only here, that area we want support. And all these supports actually connect to the build plate only and will not damage this beautiful, beautiful base top surface that we have uh, created. Speaking of trophies, uh, you don't have to give me a trophy for best Bamboo Studio YouTuber, but what you can do is to give me a like if you enjoyed watching this video and also subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, since this really helps me and also give me an indicator on if I should make more Bamboo Studio videos or if I should talk more about my 3D printing business or if I should just talk more about 3D printers in general. And I'm just here to uh, make videos for you. So please do let me know what you want to see in a future video and I can guarantee you that I'm going to do my absolute best in order to teach myself and also hopefully teach you even more things in Bamboo Studio. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Lucas. Start with Alice and like, ends with S, and to subscribe. Please do both and see you all in the next one.